Welcome back to a very British space program. This is episode 28 that we're on now, and you find us just uh, launching the the second of our Jupiter probes. This is the Jaguar. This is a Hesperus 3 satellite going up. In this episode, we're going to hopefully set these craft off into uh, onto their track towards Jupiter and see how they go. If they succeed, if they do well, if everything f goes well, we should be putting a few more of these up into orbit to go to some of the other celestial bodies we haven't visited yet, possibly even going to Mars and Venus again because these things have got a better sort of range and, and lifespan and so forth. So we've got that coming up. Um, we also have to get some money because although we're sending these deep interplanetary missions off, we, we, we're not getting money for them just yet. So we need to get that sorted and get some money from somewhere to keep funding this until we can get all the paybacks and payouts that we want. And then we're also going to be doing something around the moon because the moon is becoming more and more interesting to us. And it seems as though the Americans and the USSR are interested in it. And then, well, we'd like to be able to use it a bit. But please like, subscribe, comment down below and let's get on with this. So it is the 28th of May 1963 and uh, before we get into the interesting things we're going to do a geostationary commercial communications satellite. So um, we're going to first of all launch a craft and this is going to be a uh, Blue Knight 1A and on top of this we are going to have our old Newton 1 satellite bus uh, but we're going to stick a, uh, a, a, a geostationary transfer stage underneath it. Um, just to allow it to get that extra push because uh, one of the things about this is we have to take an additional payload and you can see on the top there a big chunky lump on top of our Newton craft of 750 units of communication satellite so we need to take that up there and that weighs quite a bit so although the Newton one can actually get itself normally to a uh, geostationary orbit with that extra weight on the top it's not really careful but we can basically reuse one of our old transfer stages and you can see it there and it's basically stripped off its solar panels because it doesn't need them because it's going to pretty much do this almost straight away and um we're just going to use that to boost it up there and then it gives us plenty of plenty of delta v to do this so we're going to do our burn at um i think it's an ascending node we're actually looking at so we're going to do an ascending node burn with that uh, spectre engine transfer stage got some rcs on it it only takes it you know a couple of minutes before it's actually at the node and it can do its transfer and just send it on up there and it's a, just a nice big boost up and it's going to use a big chunk of fuel there and I, I would imagine that the blue knight 1a is actually probably overkill for this we could probably use uh, a blue squire for this if we really wanted to if we wanted to trim everything down we could probably change the craft entirely the uh, the newton newton one completes the burn there and um, originally with the plan the plan i had for this was to actually take that payload up there and then decouple it once we got to the required orbit, let it complete its mission and then use the Newton one as our own our own geostationary craft and uh, for communications and keep it. But um, the Newton one, first of all, <clears throat> it, it doesn't have the uh, communication system that we actually like. We've got the, the squires that are doing that and they can be they can be knocked out quite quickly if need be up in um, in Spade Adam. So, you know, doing these heavier launches are requiring us to do them from Australia at the moment. So. Um, we, we could be using some of this to our advantage but you know what it's, it's a commercial thing it sort of runs against me to actually jewel up the contract at the moment but we may, we may see what we do in the future so anyway we just do our little burn there that's going to uh, circularize and finalize the inclination a little bit just perfect it out a bit there and it is sorted we're in the right position roughly i believe yeah of about well no no we actually need to just change it so we've still got a little bit more burning to do we need to actually make sure that we're just above the right section of the planet because one of the big problems about this is you actually have to be above the correct section of planet so there we go do that final bit of burn circularize it off and done so next up it is the 19th of June. We've gone from May to June. It is the 19th of June, 1963. The USSR have actually announced that they've put their first woman in orbit. That's Valentina Tereshikova. Um, um, while they're doing that, we're, uh, we're putting up another of our geostationary communication craft. This is actually just to, to help us. And this is during a bit of a, a lull in launches from Spade Adam. We've got a bit of work going on at Spade Adam at the moment. We're sorting out launch pads and things like that. Um, we're also, you know, preparing for some other missions to come, um, but we've got to wait for some tech to come along. So while that's happening, we're just going to improve our communications. And there we go. We're, we're sending up 
with the, uh, the the squire there we're sending up one of our, our communications craft to geostationary orbit it's going to use this little um, transfer stage that we got from the Hesperus and it's going to use it's going to have our little geostationary craft go up there and you know in the dark because that's how we like to film these things because half the time this stuff is in the dark it's one of the problems with being around a planet I suppose they, they block out the Sun um, but we get rid of our little transfer stage to the final burn with the main engine on the on the craft i think and uh, i think we're we're about ready yeah we're, we're out there and now we're just going to do our basically our um change of inclination at our furthest out point and circularization at the same time like our other craft we're not actually going to put this into its final orbit yet because um i want at least four of them we want at least four in orbit and until we've got at least four in orbit we're not in a real push to put them in any specific orbits um there is a contract coming up as well with uh, a requirement for a geostationary comm system so we might combine that and give ourselves a bit of a better coverage so we we'll, we will see what's going to happen with that but pretty much we we buzz out as far to our 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 geostationary transfer peak as possible we get our now importantly we get our antennas positioned so we really need to use these directional antennas you've got to actually target them so we're targeting earth with one of them and it's uh, it's it's field it's angle of sort of coverage is just enough to cover the earth so it's, it's actually quite nice it covers earth and most of the orbits around earth um, and then we're just going to um, use our small little thrusters on the bottom there to carry out our sort of semi circularization but primarily our inclination change and by putting these two together, we, we actually save quite a lot of delta V of putting them in as individual sort of move, maneuvers. And there we go. And so we just set up and we're just gonna orientate it on the normal so that we can actually make sure it's gonna get sunlight on it at most of the time. It's gonna have a very small period when it's not got sunlight on it. And it's just gonna sit there and communicate away. Um, while it does that though, um, we're gonna jump back over to the big missions, that are our Jupiter missions. So this is, 29th of June 1963 and uh, this is the Jaguar uh, craft this is the last one of the two that we put up it's going to be the first that we're going to actually eject out um, it's going to do its little ejection burn and I'm not going to uh, show you too much of this it's just you know burning away repulsing away as it does um, all systems are working nice it's going to spend around the next sort of two years uh, uh, the next important moment is actually going to be about two years ago from now when it actually enters the Jovian system. It's only going to be two years to get to to, to uh, Jupiter, which actually isn't too bad um, considering everything. Although Jupiter's uh, SOI is, is huge. So um, it'll be interesting to see what we can actually do with this craft when it gets there, what science it gets. It, there's potential that we'll actually already have other missions on the way because of the time difference there that time period and you can see that it's actually not going to take too long to get out there to to Jupiter which is is really interesting actually because you know it's a long way out there but we're putting a lot of energy in there and we can actually put a lot of energy in going to Jupiter because it will capture which is really good so uh, the next one is uh, is Jackal and well uh, we had a bit of a problem here primarily um, number one the video uh, <laughs> got corrupted shall we say and uh, secondly you'll notice that Jackal does not seem to be moving very fast at the moment. That is because it's in orbit still roughly around the Earth. Um, there was a staging or computer error on Jackal, which has caused, uh, shall we say, a misread, i.e. I pressed the space bar twice. Yeah, so we um, we fired off its departure stage. We didn't realize that it had actually engaged and was actually initiating the engines. We thought they'd failed or, or, or they hadn't actually initiated. We uh, set the signal again and, well, um, we decoupled it. So um, that was a problem. Um, we do not have enough fuel on this craft to get it anywhere, so it's going to basically be around Earth. But the big problem is it's got some nuclear material on top of it. So that nuclear material has a half-life of 40 years. Um, that's that's more than long enough for us to repurpose it, um, but we don't really have a problem with that. The big problem we have is if we're going to keep that thing around the planet or it's going to come back down um international incident i think is the phrase we're going to talk about so the hesperus 3 program is paused at that point we're not going to launch anymore until we figure out primarily if we can fix the problem and the uk's primary goal is actually going to be to um save face towards the international community because we've probably got nuclear material just floating around the earth that we can't really control and we technically we've got that with puck too but that's it's only a small amount so uh, we've sort that out anyway to this launch, this is the this is a big one. This is actually the seventh of July, nineteen sixty-three. So we're into July now. 
and uh, this is it looks just like a um, a normal um, blue knight it's it's got something a little different in it there you go you can see it finally unveiled this is a hesperus 1m so this is the one of the original hesperus crafts that we've modified this was actually under production for a long time and this this is going to carry a communications constellation to the moon for us because one of the big problems we have when we're, we're landing on the moon or we're anywhere near the moon at the moment we don't really have um any sort of communications program in place to actually allow us to do anything around the moon so we're going to send up a communications constellation of six little uh, satellites there they've got directional antennas they've got uh, unidirectional antennas they should give us coverage of the moon they should give us coverage back to geostationary orbit and to the earth ideally this is the last flight the last true flight of the hesperus one um we're you know the, the hesperus three took over from that after the hesperus twos were ev evolutions of hesperus one hesperus three is currently basically on the uh, on the slowdown so we're not quite sure what's going on. The only reason we've been allowed to actually launch this is because it is solar powered and does not use RTG. So if that had, if we'd actually gone for the more up-to-date craft, we would actually probably have not been launching this just because um, international concerns, shall we say. So this thing is going to head out to the moon and it's going to take, you know, four days or so to get there. We're going to make sure that it's going in, a, in, a, in the correct orientation around the moon, appropriate direction around the moon like that. Um, because, well, it just it's nice to have everything going in the, in the correct direction, shall we say. It's consistent. If we ever have to do anything maintenance on these things, which I don't imagine we ever will, or if we ever want to, you know, analyze them and, and see what's happening with them after a long time around the moon. So... We're going to just continue burning away, repulsing away with that transfer stage, and soon it's going to cut out. There we go. We fire a little bit of our um, of our row engine just to bring us in, and then we're going to use our RCS just to finish off the burn, bring it round the moon. There, so we have to put a little bit more energy into it just to get it to the direct position we want. Um, this craft has, uh, because it's got quite a bit on the top there, it's a little bit of uh, wobbliness. You can see the probes on there. We've got all six of them arranged in that sort of form very much like uh, they're very much evolutions of actually the the design structure that we sent up into our halo program to actually put up the i think it was 12 craft or something around the earth as our original sort of halo constellation which is being decommissioned as we talk uh, at the moment it's you know now we're getting more geostationary systems we don't really need the halo as much um it, it still has its role but it will be slowly decommissioned as it and it'll probably fall back through the atmosphere and, and whatnot um but at the moment it's doing a job for us so it's it, you know it's got some use so um we basically do our little capture burn around the moon and then it's about putting ourselves into the right uh right orbit so what we want to do is we want to get ourselves into a um a, a basically an orbit that is um ideally for releasing these craft either to uh, bigger or smaller than the final orbit we want. We want to have it like because we've got six craft we want to have basically either seven sixths of the orbital time or five sixths of the orbital time and you can do a little bit of math for that figure out what your preferred orbit's going to be take the time and then add a sixth or take a sixth off and that's basically what your orbital period wants to be so we get into a position where we're going to do that and we're going to use the the hesperus stage to do that it's done the capture now it's going to do its its next modification which is partly the inclination because we want to be equatorial and partly is going to be changing the actual period of the orbit so that we can actually get into that nice um that nice uh, orbit that we want where we can start releasing our craft so um we do have a row engine on this with limited ignition so it's got uh, just oh, i think we've had a couple of ignitions now and we're just going to unload our payload there you see them is firing off and that's pretty much it for the carrier craft now we're just going to get rid of all of those and the carrier craft is pretty much done now so instead of leaving it floating around because it does not have directional antennas on it it's basically just a carrier it's got you know local local unidirectional and um, directional antennas we're just going to basically slow it down and crash it into the moon because we can watch what happens as well we've got satellites watching the moon we've got telescopes watching the moon we're interested in it we've even got craft down there that could actually maybe pick something up and see what happens so each of these craft now is going to have to circularize so they're going to come around to their uh, their apoaps or periaps and they're going to circularize um 
and that's all we're going to do we're just going to work through that one by one so the first one there you go you can see they're triangular in shape just like our our halo craft but they're a bit longer because they're actually carrying a, a bit of extra fuel a bit of extra power they, you know they're, they're bigger craft because they've got to have bigger transmitters and everything on board so that's the first one done um then we've got the second one looks just the same we're going to speed this up just a little bit more so each one of these is going to get a little bit faster uh, just to make it easy for us so on the top they each have a single antenna that's directional so they're going to be able to fire that antenna back towards the earth um, which will give them connection to the earth and then their unidirectional antennas are actually going to be omnidirectional sorry omnidirectional unidirectional omnidirectional antennas will actually cover the moon um, and they'll be able to give us a connection to all of the craft on the moon our landers our our orbital craft everything so that's the second one done we're on to our third now you can see we're speeding up a bit more you see the craft's moving a little quicker when we do this and this one's just going to fire its engines up um, at the point at which they all finish and you'll notice this one when it started was actually in a normal orientation up down they will all orientate themselves into the normal when they finish doing their burns just so that as they return around the moon the solar panels are always going to have some sunlight on them apart from when they're in eclipse by the moon or by the earth so they will retain a decent charge and the charge on board will actually last a good amount of time it's one of the reasons why they're the size that they actually are so that's that one done we're on to the so we're on to number four now and this one's going to go even a little bit quicker we're just speeding each of these up each time and again you see it's got a slight rotation these craft do have a slight rotation on them now they have limited uh reaction control systems they do not have the ability to fix that rotation in the normal sense so i can't actually just press a button right now and, and fire some engines to stop the rotation what we can do is we can change the actual position orientation of the craft and then use rcs thrusters to counter it as well so there is a way of you know with limited rcs of actually doing it and we're on to our fifth one now this is going to be a quick one you see we're burning away already we're getting a lot faster with them we're actually speeding up the video we're actually at about sort of three times speed now and this took up quite a while and then we're going to get to our final one and this is about three and a half four times the speed and we're just going to fire it up to do, 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 do get going and you'll notice that if for each one they've basically circularized above what looks like the same place on the moon that's because each of them has gone round in one circle and done it in the same place and then their their orbits are sort of fixed and there you go you can see our lovely little thing there they've all, they're all signaling back to the earth they're also connecting to each other so even if one or two of them are actually eclipsed or blocked by the by them the the moon so they can't transmit back to earth they can which is really good for us and you can see they're already making connections with some of our landers some of our orbital craft so they've now got better signal better connection all the way around which is superb so we now got our moon sorted so that opens up the possibility of doing a, a few more things around the moon doesn't it i think but as we leave that system just to to work its way around and elaborate and whatnot until next time have a great one